are watching on TV and the internet, I'd like to welcome you to the Light of the Gospel broadcast. Uh, let me remind you every Friday evening, 7 o'clock, uh, we try to be right here on Channel 11 NCN to bring the gospel to encourage the world. But praise the Lord, we're going to turn into our scripture to Daniel chapter 2 from verse 1 through 19 this morning. And I want to talk today on uh, God give dreams and interpretation of dreams. God of heaven, he gives dreams and interpretation of dreams. Daniel chapter 2, verses 1 through 19. So the word of God said in Daniel chapter 2, on the second year of the reign, of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syria, O king, <coughs> live forever. Tell thy servant the dream, and he will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone for me. If you will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a downhill. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream and we will show the interpretation there of it. Verse 8. And the king answered and said, I know of certain that he would gain the time because he see the thing is gone from me. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Till the time be change, therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that he can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered uh, before the king and said, This is not a there is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's uh, matter before, uh, therefore. There is no king, lord, nor ruler that acts such things as any magician or astrologer or Kali. It is a real thing that a king requires, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For this cause, the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And uh, they saw Daniel and his fellow to be slain. Verse 14, Then Daniel answered, answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. Verses 15. He answered and said to Ariad, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariad made the thing known to Daniel. And then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king interpretation. Verse 17. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah. Miss 
shall not derive his companions, that they will desire mercies of God, of the God of heaven, concerning the secret, that Daniel and his fellow uh, would not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, and then Daniel blessed the God of heaven, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the God, the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changed it the times and the season. He removed it and set it up kings, and he gave wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to uh, them that no understanding. He revealed it, the deep and secret things. He know it that is uh, in the darkness, and the light dwelt with him. And verses 23, I thank thee and praise thee, O God, thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now that we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Father God, today I come before you. I thank you for your precious word. Father God, I thank you for those that are watching in the church and around Guyana, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, this morning. I ask you to fill me with the function of the Holy Spirit to function, Father God. We ask you, God, to bless everyone that is watching by TV and internet. In Jesus' name, amen. So today I'd like to speak on the topic, God giveth dreams and interpretation. Yes, he do. In this life, it's like we are living a dream. This life is like a dream. It seemed like just the other day, not long ago, that you and I, we were little. It seemed like someone had to show us how to bow our lace to our shoe. So life can be like a dream at times. And, and then in this life, we have dreams. We have dreams and desires. Dreams that we want to see materialize and come to pass. Things that we desire to see in our life happen so you can have a better life. So we can have a better life. I believe everyone desires to have a better life. There have been a lot of ups and downs and discouragement in your life. From this moment, you have to ask yourself, How can I, how can my dreams come to pass? Am I dreaming big enough? Am I trusting God to fulfill my dreams and desires where well, He can? Because the Word of God said in Psalms 47 and verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. In the word of God, in Psalm 126, the word of God said, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with sin. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things unto them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad, torn again of our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Yes, the Israelites, they recall that they were in captivity and how God delivered them. And God brought them back to the promised land. And when God brought them back to the promised land, ah boy, they lied. Land where God brought them back in the promised land, and it was like a dream they were going through because God is fulfilling their desires. In this life, you and I, we have dreams, we have we have 
God desires, God is able to fulfill those dreams and desires according to His will. I believe it is God's will to bless His children. Sometimes, what you think you miss out in your younger days, He can bless you in these days and time. But you have to turn in to Him. In the Word of God here, we see the King's dream. King Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> he had made himself a God in the earth. As a man, he had made himself a God in the earth. At one time, he desired that other men will worship him. Let me say that for those that are watching my TV, if you think that you are you is a God in the earth, you are a liar, you mean fool, there is only one and true and living God, and he is almighty God, and he revealed in flesh as Jesus Christ. And no man is God. No idol is God. God is alive and well. Jesus Christ said in Revelation 1 18, Behold, I he that liveth and was dead, and I am alive forevermore, and have the keys of hell and death. Jesus Christ said, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I am the beginning, I am the ending. There is none like unto him. Yes, he is God revealing flesh and dwell among us. The Bible says, but God commanded his love unto us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible here, in Daniel chapter 2, he said it for himself, because he was a king, <coughs> and he was the king of Babylon, he tell himself, he is like a god in the earth, and men are to worship him, but he was not God in the earth. So he made himself a God in the earth, but he was lost on his way to hell. He was a brutal king. He was proud. He was far from God. But God even worked in the life of the unsaved. God even worked in the life of those that don't know God. Because God is in control. And God used the dream as a means of communication to Nebuchadnezzar. You see, has, has, had a man, had a prophet came to Nebuchadnezzar and said, Thus saith the Lord, Nebuchadnezzar would have never believed that prophet. Because he was a rich king, he was so wealthy and so high, he was a powerful king in all the earth in those days and time. There was not the next king, another king that was powerful than him. By the way, God allowed him to get power. Yes. And you that are watching my TV, let me say, if you have some kind of authority and some kind of power, God is the one that gives you that power. Do not abuse that power on your fellow human being. But give God thanks and praise for that power. Here has Nebuchadnezzar gotten his dream. We see that his requirement in verse 4 to 13, he required an interpretation of his dream. I know sometimes you and I, as physical as human beings, we have desires, we have dreams, and we need an interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar, he did not chose the man of God like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but he had turned himself to the wrong source for an answer to his dreams and to his desire, he is looking to the wrong source. And sometimes in life, when those people want to have a dream fulfilled in their life, they look, they turn to the wrong sources. Number one in the Bible here, 
In verse 2, the king commanded to call the magicians. We see, first of all, one of the wrong source was the magicians. He said for the people that do magic, that they will interpret his dream. They couldn't interpret his dream. Look in the Bible in verse 2. Then he turned to the astrologers. So the magicians couldn't interpret this. And the astrologers, they were great in earth in those days of time because the astrologers had knowledge of the galaxy. Those are the ones that read the stars and the moon and the signs and times. And today, there are some great astrologers, but not great like God. You can look in your calendar, your almanac at home, and you wonder how these people know the whole year, when, the full, when it will be full moon, when it will be, you know, what you call the first quarter, last quarter, new moon, and so forth. Those are the works of the astrologers. That they have the devices to detect through mathematics. To know the time and season. And even they could not interpret the king's dream. Then in the word of God, not only the, not the magician and the astrologers, but then he came to the sorcerers. The sorcerers are those that today, uh, locally we will say the Obia people, the people that work Obia. Let me say, everything that hap is happening now been about for a long time. Witchcraft, Obeyism, all of that been about for a long time. So, Nebuchadnezzar had those people, but they couldn't interpret his dream. The sorcerers were those that claimed to speak to the dead, those that they have spoken to the fallen angels, deep demonic forces, and so on. Those are the demons that fall. Those are the angels that fell, and they transgress against God. God casts them out of heaven, and now those demons are roaming in the earth, and some people are worshiping those demons. They didn't have the answer. And then, thirdly, he turned to the Chaldees. The Chaldees are those, that, that nation from the Chaldean, those that, they were great educators and so on, and they were advisors to the kings, I understand. And let me say, they did not have the answer and the interpretation to the dream. You see, there was an Isaac, he dreamed a dream and he forgotten the dream. And now we want somebody that are claiming to be wise men in the earth and to have all knowledge and spiritual knowledge and technology to interpret his dream. And he wants them to remember the dream because those men were claiming to be great men in the earth like some men today who are claiming to be prophets, but they are false prophets. So we see the magicians we see the, the sorcerers. We see the, the, <coughs> the astrologers, the scientists them. And we see the educators, they couldn't interpret history. You see, folks, sometimes we have a dream. We want this thing to come true. But sometimes we look to the wrong group of people. We look to the wrong sources. We look to the Chaldeans and we look to the uh, sorcerers, we look to the magicians, and, uh, uh, and you, look to, uh, you look to the astrologers reading your, your, your monthly planet and these things. But hey, we need to look into the Word of God. Yeah. Let me say that, that 
You know, the, the king said, if you cannot interpret my dream, you and your family will be cut in pieces. Boy, Daniel, how are you about that? Daniel was a prophet. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the word of God here, the word of God said, and Daniel, when he heard it, his heart moved with compassion. And Daniel, he, he, was, he was willing to, to get an interpretation because he knew that the God of heaven can interpret dreams. Let me say something. If you have a dream in your life, you have a desire, hey, and you can look into the wrong source, turn away, turn away, turn away, and look to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus can make a way for you. I know 40 years of age. Many people in this lifetime, they are over 50, 60. And if you ask them, they will say, Oh, Pastor, I, I've been through hurts and hurts and hurts multiple times because I look to the wrong kind of people for comfort. I look to the wrong sources for help. I have this dream and I have this desire. And I have all this, but my heart was broken over and over and over. Because people look to the wrong soul. Jesus will never fail you. You might go through some tough times, some hard time, but if you keep faithful to Jesus, hey, he's the way maker. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. Yes, he is the way maker today. And then Daniel came and Daniel prayed. And the Bible says in the word of God, in our verses 19, there was a secret revealed unto Daniel in the night vision. So that all those folks out there, the scientists, which is the astrologers here in the word of God in those days, Hey, the magicians, those that work all their magic and their tricks, and, 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 and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, educators, they thought that they are the big things in the world, but they were not bigger than God, and they couldn't interpret the dream. We have a lot of folks in our country in authority the ministers and so on. And I compliment them for the works that they are doing. But let me tell you, without God help, nobody can do anything. Because without God, no one can wake up this morning. God is the one, the God, that gave dreams and he gave interpretation. And God is the only one who can give you a good life. He is the only one who can give you a blessed life. And the prescription to have a blessed life is to stay close to God, to stay faithful to Him. The Psalms chapter 1 said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law that he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree that planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Let me say, God owned the heaven and the earth, and he is the creator of the heaven and the earth. And he is the creator of every human being and animals and so forth. All the fishes in the sea. He is the creator of the galaxies, the stars and the sun and the moon. He is the creator. And God is the only one we need to look for or look to. To fulfill our dreams and desires. You have a desire in life. You have a dream you want to control. Don't look to the sorcerers. Don't look to the governmental sector. Don't look to the magicians. Hey, hey. Don't look to the scientists, the astrologers. Look to the Lord Jesus Christ. Consult with him first. You have an 
situation beyond our control, look to Jesus. The Word of God says He's author and finisher of our faith. I just time, I want to thank you for watching those that watch my TV. I want to pray for you wherever you are. You are sitting there right now. I want to pray for you. You said, Pastor, you've been looking to the wrong sources to get your dreams and desires fulfilled. But you want to take a change and look to Jesus. But first, you need to accept Jesus as your Savior. And you want to accept Him as your Savior so you can go to heaven when you die. And you want to pray this prayer. Why not pray with me today? Right where you are, sitting there. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you as I am. I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and save me. And give me eternal life. That when I die, heaven will be my home. I thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. Amen. If you just say that prayer, we believe. We've been born again. We'd like for you to go get into a church and start uh, feeling the love of God. Give us a call on 691-3101. We'd like to send you some free Bible study. And God richly bless you until next time.